Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I got this piece of uh, car axle and I'm gonna go ahead and make a ads out of it for a buddy of mine. Um, there are several steps that I need to do, but I need to taper this middle section here quite a bit to isolate a large section of the whole piece here uh, to get the right shape. So I'll, I'll, after this heat, I'll go in and grab my, my first uh, experimental example that I made uh, just to kind of explain that a little more. Uh, but I'm going to get to this before the steel gets cold. So this is the basic shape that I'm trying to achieve here. Um, as you can see, I need this, this wide piece and that's why I'm drawing this middle portion out. So basically, my plan is to draw this out first and then flatten this portion, get this shaped how I want, and then move on to punching the hole. Uh, just so that this stays intact in its most original form without getting deformed too much by all the work going on here, grabbing it with tongs, etc. Um, but the first step is definitely getting that taper, so that's what I'll be working on for the next while. If you all are enjoying this video so far, leave a like and a comment and do subscribe. Uh, these are all things that are free things to do and really help my channel out. Um, anyway, I will let you get back to the video. I do enjoy it uh, and thank you guys for watching. All right, so I've got the uh, middle section drawn out pretty well, <clears throat> as you can see. Uh, I've, you know, inset it to the top of the of where the ads will be, um, meaning that the the ads, when it's done, is actually going to curve upwards uh, if it was laying down like this. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to heat this section up and flatten it out, um, and then start kind of getting that to the shape I want. Uh, and then the final step, obviously, will be to uh, punch the hole in this. That'll be a complicated process. I will explain more thoroughly, but tapering and flattening you know basic shaping is stuff that uh you know if you want me to make a video about these things uh, i can do that but they're pretty simple um so i'll just give you a brief overview of what i'm doing in time lapse form <clears throat> that's just a bit quicker for people who don't you know have an hour and a half to spend watching me whack things <laughs> so i will put you back in the time lapse and i will see y'all when i've got that flattened out and shaped to where i want it So I've got this bit flattened out now. Um, I'm going to move on to making the hole for the handle. I have a special chisel for that. Uh, and essentially the theory is you punch uh, all the way through one side until you get to the other side almost. You flip it over and you do the same thing on the other side. And basically what will happen is uh, instead of if you were to take a drill and do this, 
Uh, this way you only, um, you're only losing a very thin sheet metal uh, amount of material about the size of the hole. Whereas if you were to drill it, you would lose a lot of material. So this is basically a way of reinforcing the two sides uh, of the, what's called the eye, the hole in the whatever tool you're making. It's basically to strengthen these sides, give them a bit more material, uh, and just make an overall stronger tool. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. All right, so uh, I've got the hole punched in here. The next step is to take this thing here. It's called a drift, and I'm basically just going to spread this hole wider um, because right now, as you can see, it is not very big, far too small for a handle of a hand tool. Uh, what this will do is help me spread it out so that it's big enough to fit a handle in, and I'm also going to take, these are called the cheeks of the eye. I'm going to take the cheeks and spread them out uh, upwards and downwards and what that'll do is that extra stability uh, more surface area gripping the handle uh, this is probably the longest part of making any uh, wooden handled hand tool like this so I am gonna go back to the time lapse once again um, again basically all I'm doing is hammering this in spreading it out uh, leaving the drift in there uh, and then hitting the cheeks to spread them this way uh, while keeping that center hole exactly where it is. Um, just using this as kind of my, my mold. Okay, so you can see I've completed the uh, process of widening that hole to receive a handle and uh, widening out these cheeks to make them sport a handle better. Uh, so I'm now going to move on to shaping the curvature of this piece here and the, uh, the, the bowling shape of this, uh, the actual part of the tool that will be doing the work, the blade if you will. Uh, that's going to be a lot of just tedious tweaking. Um, just seeing, you know, oh, this is a you know, quarter inch off. I better heat it back up and kind of whack it back into place kind of stuff. Not a lot to be explained there. Uh, I will go ahead and put you guys back in the time lapse. I just wanted to make sure uh, you all had a clear break between forming the actual uh, eye and cheeks and uh, shaping the rest of the form of the ads itself. So I've got the, the final shape here as far as forging goes. Uh, so as you can see, it bends up a little bit uh, and the actual blade itself is curved. Um, I am going to let this cool down uh, and then I'm going to take it over to the grinder to get it 
all cleaned up, uh, especially here in the back. I want to kind of make that a little more flat. Uh, and then obviously sharpening of the blade uh, and just overall cleanup of the exact dimensions of the sides here. Um, I will show you guys the final uh, product here. Um, and so yeah. All right, so you can see here, I've got the final finished uh, product here. I haven't put the finishing oil on it yet, but I will do that uh, pretty soon. I cleaned this up, made it flat, nice and um, you know even, sort of rounded up the sides, uh, and then I made the bevel. Now, uh, I decided not to uh, buff this yet, just to show you the beautiful color that can be achieved uh, with certain degrees of temperature on polished steel. Uh, you don't see this very often. Um, but I'm not sure how well you can see it. Maybe I move it closer. It goes from a golden purple to a dark indigo blue purple down there. Um, and that's all just due to, the, it's actually uh, minute oxides that just occur uh, when exposed to oxygen uh, at a certain temperature on the steel and uh, iron. Uh, and this can be achieved with almost any alloy. Uh, and it's just a very beautiful look. But with that said, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. Um, the, these, both of these help me out uh, a lot. Uh, I will be selling these on Etsy. If anybody's interested, I will have a link in the description, uh, both to my Etsy shop and to the specific listing for uh, these ads. Uh, and with that said, I hope you all have a good one, and I will see you on the next one.